Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Acts 13, 14-42 Verses 14, 15 But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath, and sat down. And after reading of the law and the prophets, from which there were always two appointed lessons, one from the writings of Moses, and another from one of the prophets. And on this day it was probably the first chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, or the first chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them. 15. The rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, You men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. They were seen to be Jews who were traveling, and they were invited by the minister who conducted the service, to stand up and say anything they had to say. Then Paul stood up and, beckoning with his hand, said. 16. Then Paul stood up, and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel, and you that fear God, give audience. You, who, though Gentiles, have come to worship Jehovah, God of Israel, men of Israel. 17. 18. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers, and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. You that are familiar with your Bibles will be struck with the great likeness of this sermon by Paul to that of Stephen. It seems to run on the same lines. Stephen gave the history of Israel to the Israelites. Paul does the same. Ah, we can never tell how great was the influence of that dying Stephen upon this living Paul. Paul is the continuation of Stephen. His blood was not lost in that day when they stoned him to death. From his ashes sprang this mighty preacher of the word of God. 1922. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot and after that he gave unto them judges for about the space of four hundred and fifty years, until Samuel the prophet and afterwards they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them, David, to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will all this would be very pleasing to the Jews. They were never weary of hearing the ancient history of themselves as a chosen people. Paul ingratiates himself with them. The gospel that he had to preach was bitter to them, but he gilds the pill. And we must do what we can lawfully and properly do to win the attention of men and their kindly feeling to us, although we must faithfully preach the gospel. Now he got as far as David into history. Now we will step to Christ. 2325. Of this man's seed has God according to his promise raised unto Israel a Saviour, Jesus after John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think you that I am? I am not he. But, behold, there comes one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loosen. He brings in the testimony of John, who was universally respected among them. They regarded him as the last of the prophets and so Paul still tries to win their kind feelings. 26, 27. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whoever among you fears God, to you is the word of this salvation sent for they that dwell at Jerusalem, and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Not knowing it, they have fulfilled the prophecies of old in condemning Jesus, the son of David. 28, 29. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. 
and when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree, and laid him in a sepulchre. You see he has given the story of Christ, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. 30, 31. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. He does not expect them to believe without proofs, but he adduces the proof of the resurrection in the many witnesses who saw him after he had risen. 32 37. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, You are my son, this day have I begotten you. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Therefore he also says in another psalm, You will not allow your holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep, and was laid unto his fathers, and saw corruption. But he, whom God raised again, saw no corruption. So that David was not speaking of himself, but he was speaking of another and higher David, his greater son, the Son of God, begotten of the Father. 38. Be it known unto you therefore, brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, now they have it. Now he brings it out very clearly, indeed. Glad tidings are now ringing in their ears. 39. And by him all who believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. The sins which the law of Moses did not propose to touch, yes, all sins which the law of Moses could only typically remove, all these sins are now really taken away by this glorious Son. 40. 41. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets, behold, you despisers, and wonder, and perish, for I work a work in your days a work which you surely in no wise believe, though one were to declare it unto you. You cannot imagine anything more appropriate to the occasion, more properly set forth, more bold, more clear, but these men were not prepared to receive it. 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. They are earnest hearers who want to hear the same sermon again. But perhaps they did not expect to hear the same words, but to get the same sense and have it explained more fully that they might the better grasp it. Oh, what a mercy it is when the congregation is going away, if there are some that stay behind, anxious to learn more.